What's wrong? <laughs> Come on, Julian Crane's gonna laugh me off the phone. Why do you say that, Brian? Like he's really gonna believe that I was on a fishing trawler and hauled his sister out of the sea. Why wouldn't he believe it? Because he must get umpteen calls a day from con men trying to scam him out of his millions. Like he's really gonna believe that I saved his sister, Sheridan Crane, one of the richest women in the world. You're not making any sense. His sister was reported missing at sea down here. There was a search for her. It's beyond. Doc, Doc, that's not what's going on. Brian here thought he caught himself a mermaid, the girl of his dreams. That's not it. Of course it is. Come on, you are smitten, and you better get yourself unsmitten, because if that girl is Sheridan Crane, then she belongs with her family and her fiancé. Undoubtedly, the Cranes will fax us a photo of Sheridan, and then we'll know for sure. All right. You're right. I guess I just have to face the inevitable. I mean, come on, beautiful woman like Sheridan Crane. She wouldn't want to spend her life with a guy like me. I love Sheridan. She's everything to me. I can't live without her. No, I'm asking for a miracle. Just please bring Sheridan back to me. Please. Hey, Louise. Hey. How's Ivy doing? Better. She is right now. I gave her a sedative. Sedative? I thought she was barely conscious. Julian came in and got her upset. Why did I never see it? Why did I never see what an insensitive lowlife Julian was? You thought he was your father. Well, thank God he isn't. Thank God he isn't married to my mother anymore. I can't believe him. My mother has a terrible fall after being struck by lightning. Does Julian give a damn? No. What do you expect? He didn't even mourn for Sheridan, his own sister. I'm telling you, one of these days, Julian's gonna find himself in a situation that he can't snake his way out of. When that day comes, he's gonna wish he was never even born. I found out that I married to Julian when I woke up in the morning and saw a ring on my finger and Julian was in bed with me no god stop oh I'm sorry I was looking for a report I didn't mean to interrupt I'll look elsewhere uh, wait no Miles you bastard oh, oh, oh. you defiled my daughter you took your virginity your mother that's the ultimate sin oh, I should tear your heart out no. oh you son of a bitch oh oh um. Come to the basement, Tabitha and Timmy. We want you now. Why are Timmy and Toby being summoned to the basement? Your guess is as good as mine, lad. But things were just going so well for Timmy and Toby. They were just celebrating with a picture of our Timmy. Yes, and we had every reason to. Charity's about to lose Miguel, which means that she'll lose her powers, which in turn means that she'll never be able to destroy you and me. That's, that's why I don't understand why our friends in the basement want us to go downstairs. Now! Come to the basement now! of the one who could sing so
Descend, Tabitha and Timmy! Descend! Friends in the basement are calling us to account. And they're impatient, too. They think we should be rid of charity by now. Well, Tabby knows how Tim feels about that. Yes, I know. You're happy we failed. Timmy doesn't want charity to die. Timmy just feels that Tabitha's friends might be Tabby annoyed. My friends? Are you selling me out already? It's just that Timmy's saying the Prince of Bear come up with a good excuse and fast. But what can I say to defend myself? I've been outwitted time and time again by the forces of good. Our friends in the basement will ever understand that, Timmy. Never, never. We're doomed. Descend! Descend! I just don't get what goes on inside the head of a man like Julian. Does anything matter to him? Money, power, lording it over other people, doing whatever he wants and getting away with it. That's all that matters to Julian. Scum. You know, a while ago, uh, a long while ago, you know, I, I thought I got a glimpse of it. Of a kinder Julian. <laughs> Julian kind? Yeah, well, it was a momentary thing, believe me. Mm. He quickly reverted to the cold-hearted Julian, unfeeling, willing to do whatever would benefit him. I loved him. And think your father would love you, too. I think Julian is incapable of love. I'm sorry I had to grow up with him. I don't know how you and Sheridan did it. Alistair and Julian raising you, telling you what to do. You know, I was the lucky one. As it ended up, I don't have any crane blood in these veins. But Sheridan, I don't know how she put up with it. I don't know how she made it. I just wish I could see her. Hear her voice, see her smile one last time. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I miss her too. I guess I should be grateful for the time that we had together. It's just not enough. I'm selfish, I want more. I want her back. Hello, can I speak to Julian Crane? Well, this is Mr. Crane's attorney, Mr. Harper. Your call came through to my office. To whom am I speaking, please? Brian O'Leary. And this is in reference to what? It's about his sister, Sheridan. What about her? Well, I think I should talk to Mr. Crane himself. I can't give out his private number to someone I've never heard of. Now, if you'll tell me exactly what this is about. Look, friend, if I don't get through to Julian Crane, I'm going to go to all the TV networks and all the newspapers with the information. And when I do, it's going to look like Julian Crane doesn't give a damn about his sister. Very good. I'll give you his cell phone number. All right, fine. Hold on one second. Let me grab a pen. Okay, Mr. Harper, shoot. Thank you very much. Does anyone ever say no to you? Not when it's something that I really want. That last call, where did it come from? I see. Thank you, Judy. What more havoc have you wrought in Bermuda, Julian? Phil, Julian! Mama! Mama, wait! Let me go so 
can take care of this animal! Is that mercy? You are a vile human being, Julian Green! You are! You run to the core! How dare you do this to my daughter, to my baby! Please, let him go! Not until he's paid! What have you told her? The truth! Oh my God, that was a secret! Have you lost your mind? God, has the world gone mad? Was it my fault? I didn't take Teresa down to Bermuda. She flew down on her own. She, she insisted I talk to her. She wanted me to take Ethan back into the Crane family. We had a few drinks. She didn't object, and the next thing I knew... You swear uh, on you! Uh, you don't deserve to live in decent society! No! Oh my God. That's right, you better off me! Let me go! No! Oh. Let me go! Dear God, I'm bleeding. Good. She's disfigured me. Julian, go to my office. I'm losing blood. Now! Hi. Go now and I'll take care of you. Oh. 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 No! Oh. What is happening here, Bilal? What is going on? I'll kill him. Now what's wrong? Nothing, I'm thinking. <laughs> Brian, what's to think about? Make the phone call. Listen, if that girl you fished out of the ocean is indeed the heir to the Crane fortune, you stand to make a bundle. Your fiancé would give anything to get her back. Scuttlebutt on Bermuda has it that the man was devastated when he made it back to shore and found she hadn't. Yeah, and he went back out after her. Into the teeth of the hurricane. He wouldn't give up. It's okay. real love for you. Yeah, and I can understand why her fiancé did it. Any man would for a woman like her. Maybe it's Julian Crane. Could he have tracked you down, Brian? Hello? Yeah, hold on one second. It's one of your suppliers. Thanks. I'm going to go check on Sheridan or whoever she is. how much I could hate one human being. How much anger I had inside me. What's going on? I mean, why were you hitting Julian? Not that he doesn't deserve to be hit, but why now? What happened? Honey, Teresa's right here. I mean, she's fine. I can see that. So Charity's premonition about something bad happening to Teresa is, is not going to come true. I talked to the girls, and they told me that everything was fine, and Teresa had only talked to Julian, and, and nothing happened. So, so what brought you to this? Well, somebody, please tell me what's going on. My poor baby. All the others are just pure evil. I've seen them through the years, Alistair and Julian. Oh, wicked men, those two. Alistair so ruthless, and Julian with his maids. I would see him chasing them down the hallways, actually chasing them. And some didn't need to be chased. And now to think that Teresa could be down there with Julian, oh my God. <sighs> Julian seduced Teresa? Descend! Descend! What? What? What are you and Terry going to do? Maybe we could, we could go downstairs and, and, and plead for more time. Go down there? Well, or we could explain to our friends that, that without my powers, I haven't had the necessary means to destroy good. I'll try harder in the future. That, that's it? That's Tabby's old defense? Try harder? 
Yes, well, it does sound rather lame, doesn't it? Lame? Timmy, brother, be stuck in a cave with Axwell and Norma, then go down there with Tabby and hear her give her cockamamie excuse. Right. I can only imagine what will happen to us down there. You let the forces of good prevail. I tried to kill Charity. Really, I did several times. And failed. It's their fault. You took her powers away from her. What do you expect? Please. All I need is a little more time. Time has run out. I know I can kill Charity, but I need time. It's over. And now you will pay the ultimate price for your failure. You will go back to the beginning. Oh, no. No, not that. No, don't send us back to the beginning. What's that, Princess? What's he talking about? What's the beginning? It's the end for us, lad. The beginning is the end for us. This is no time for them, real Princess. Huh? Oh. Oh, no. What's going on? We're trapped in the vortex! Oh! If that's what's waiting for Jimmy and Tabby in the basement, then Timmy's out of here! Wait for me! Wait for Tabby! You will obey! You will obey! Maybe you are Sheridan Crane, and you do have a fiance. A man who loves you more than life itself. But I'd give anything if you were a mermaid. You just came up out of the sea to steal my heart. I could live for the rest of my life on this island with you. I'd be the happiest man in the world. This is O'Leary. Brian! <gasps> I have been dreaming of doing that since the moment I left the dock. Oh, what are you doing here? I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. Well, we got lucky and we ran into a school of albacore. And we filled the whole boat within the first six hours. <laughs> this one catch could last us through the whole season. You mean you won't have to go out again? Might even be able to take the boat out of the water. That's wonderful, because I can't stand being away from you for just one day, even. Well, it looks like you're stuck with me. I'm not going anywhere. I love you so much. Mm. I remember when I thought you were the rich Sheridan Crane. I may not be a crane, but I am much richer, because I have you. And we have each other. Only it could come true. I'm not a fool, Ethan. I know I'd be asking for a miracle for Sheridan to be alive. It's just that Mama told me to come here and pray. I figured I had nothing to lose. I know God's busy, but I figured if I prayed hard enough, maybe he'd hear me. You know what you're asking for, don't you, Luis? <sighs> Miracle. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're asking God to bring a woman you love back, back from the dead. I know, it sounds crazy. I'm the one who identified Sheridan's body from her fingerprints and dental records. But Sheridan was a strong swimmer. And she, she had this... <laughs> Passion for life, this incredible will to live. Yes, Louise, but she's... I know. All right, I, I went to the cremation. I took her ashes. I can't 
give up on her. Just can't. <sighs> My head, I can say. Sheridan's dead. My heart won't accept it. I understand. I'm sorry. I just wish I could give you hope. I wish you could, too. Oh, Pilar, I'm so sorry. I can imagine what you're going through. Teresa, get your mother a glass of water. Yes, Dr. Russell. Whitney, you girls lied to me. I asked you if everything was all right, and you said that it was. I'm so sorry. Mom, I wanted to tell you the truth. Then why didn't you? It, it was just too horrible. And Teresa was scared of what Luis and Ethan would do if they found out. I mean, they would have killed Julian. Yes, they would. Mom, Teresa's my best friend. I couldn't give her away. Mama. Here, yeah, honey. Take a sip. Do you, you want a sedative or something to quiet your nerves? I protected my Teresa for so long. And now to think that Julia cried. Oh, God. I should have scratched his eyes out. And if he was blind, he couldn't do anything to a woman again, like he did to my daughter. Teresa, exactly what happened? Julian got her drunk. Oh, my God. I don't think I should. I, I'm not really much of a drinker. Now, you shouldn't deny yourself a taste. Well, I still have two more sets. This stuff coats the throat. One glass won't kill you. Maybe you're right. Mm -hmm. I should. Yeah. Don't tell me anymore, Whitney. I know the rest. Oh, that bastard. Mom. idea to disobey them. Maybe we should have gone downstairs and faced the music. Is Tabby crazy? Running away might make things even worse for us. What could be worse than that, 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 that thing, that vortex, that what you call it, vortex thing that made Timmy and Tabby disappear. Timmy and Tabby have to get out of here. <laughs> and go where? Tabby will drive down to New York, pick up the royalty from the ambassadors, and take the first flight to Honolulu. Tabby, come on! Oh, oh, I can't! Sure, Tabby can. I can't! My feet, they're stuck, I can't move! We're not going anywhere, Timmy. You know, I can only imagine how you must feel about losing Sheridan. But if I, if I ever lost Teresa, I don't know what I'd do without her. <laughs> Life would be so empty. I'm glad you feel that way about Teresa. She means everything to me. I will always love her and protect her, and I swear that to you, Luis. I will lay down my life for her, and if anyone ever hurt her, I would kill them. 
Let me say we go see how she's doing. Yeah. God, that vicious, crazy woman. She scarred my face. Go. Paid her salary all these years, and she has the audacity to physically attack me. She's certifiable. I'm going to bring charges against her. Yes, I have her locked in prison, the deepest, darkest dungeon they have. She's forgotten who I am. I am Julian Crane. Oh, thank God someone's saying, look, look what your good friend Pilar has done to me. Just look. Oh, oh my nose. Look, more blood. Has the whole world gone mad? You know what I should really do to you, Julian? I should strap you to an operating table and let Pilar pluck out your eyes but like cut out your tongue. This is very disturbing talk, Eve. Oh, you'd find it more disturbing when you're no longer able to look at young girls and when your vile voice is silenced. What have I done to deserve this? You're a pig, Julian. Well, I fail to see what the big deal is. Why is everyone so upset? Because you're a pig! But... Teresa and I had a bit too much champagne. I, I, I didn't mean to let things get out of hand. I, oh, how did you? How? I mean, well, we, we had sex. But you and I once had sex, too, Dr. Russell. God, the thought of it just fills me with revulsion. Well, men and women have sex every day. <laughs> Teresa was a virgin, Julian, just like I was a virgin. You were a virgin? Oh. I didn't know that. Well, of course, that's because you never cared to know. Teresa was an, a young woman in love with Ethan, and you took advantage of her! That's simply not true. You drugged her so that you could have sex with her. It was my conjugal right! What? What didn't Pilar tell you? Teresa and I are man and wife. I married her immediately after my divorce from Ivy came through. Oh my god! You see, I. I was perfectly within my rights. <laughs> Do you think that Ethan and Louise are going to accept that as an excuse? If anything, it's going to make them more furious with you. Just keep our voices down here. You are the most pathetic excuse for a man, Julian. You don't care about anybody but your lousy self. <laughs> Perhaps it's news, oh, Shut up, Eve, please! Please, nothing, you son of a bitch! Good God, what, what right do you have to act this way? I, I tell you that Teresa is my wife and you punch me? Oh, you insufferable pig! You are gonna pay for what you've done to Teresa. You, you're a scum, Julian. You're just a menace to society. It's going a tad bit overboard, don't oh, you think? I'll show you overboard! Now, stop! Stop? No, you need to be stopped, Julian, before some other young woman falls prey to you just like me. You seduced me with drugs and alcohol, but I was too naive and too young to know what was going to happen to me. And now poor Teresa. Oh, God, your wife? Mrs. Julian Crane. Oh, God, you're a monster. You're a disgusting monster. You know, I didn't drop by your office so you could call me names. I really need medical attention. These scratches could leave scars. Oh, I hope they do. You, you deserve to suffer. 
and suffer, you will. My baby. My poor baby. You just try to calm yourself, okay? I know what that wicked man did to you. He touched you. He put his filthy hands on you. But, Mama, I don't remember. All I remember is that I dreamed I was with Ethan. And in my dream, Ethan and I were married. And we were making love. It was our honeymoon, and it was beautiful. And when I woke up, I saw a ring on my finger and someone next to me. And I just assumed that it was Ethan. Good. Mama, I was happy to have him next to me, thinking that I had married him. But when I realized that it wasn't Ethan, that it was Julian. What did that monster do to you? What did he do? Julian told me that he had a dream too, Mama. That he was making love to me. Then we realized it wasn't a dream, it was real. Julian made love to me, and I was his wife. Oh. God, it makes me sick. His hands should be cut off for what he did. You are an innocent child. And he's nothing but an animal. Oh, dear God, I warned you. Mama, I didn't know what was happening, I swear. Please, please, Mrs. Lopez Fitzgerald, don't be angry with Teresa. I mean, it wasn't her fault. She went down there to try to help Ethan. And Julian is the one who got her drunk and took advantage of her. How many times did I tell you never to go near Julian Crane? How many times, Teresa? Oh, dear God. Why didn't you listen to me? Why? No one can protect us now. Then what did Timmy and Debbie do? We can face our doom with dignity. Chin up, straight back, no tears, and just remember the good times we've had. They were the best of times, Tabby. Timmy will never forgive, Princess. and Ethan find out what you've done to Teresa, they're going to come after you. You get away from me with that thing. They're going to want blood, Julian. They're going to want to kill you, but I won't let them. You, you won't? <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't just let them kill you and be done with it. Oh, you, you. No. <sighs> I'm going to suggest that they geld you first. You mean... The... And I'm going to show them exactly where to cut. This is not funny, Eve. You think that I'm joking, Julian? Not a chance. I am going to watch as Luis and Ethan cut you into tiny little pieces. They'll burn for this. <laughs> There's not a jury in harmony that will convict them, especially after they hear what you did to Teresa. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm so sorry. Oh, 
Teresa, what is it? What, what happened? Mama, are you okay? What's going on? Tell me. I want answers, Mama. And this can't be just about Sheridan. What happened? Must be a way. There must be some way to stop Ethan and, and Luis from killing me. Maybe you could do it yourself. Listen, Eve. There's really no reason for them to to find out about the marriage. You see, I'm uh, I'm getting an annulment. You can't keep a thing like that a secret, Julian. They're bound to find out, and then they're going to come after you. And Luis. So full of pain and anger over Sheridan's death. God, what am I supposed to do? I think there's only one thing you can do, Julian. Perform a miracle. Bring Sheridan back from the dead. It just keeps ringing and ringing. I'll just call back later. Yes? Hello? Julian Crane? Yes, who is this? Brian O'Leary. I have news about your sister, Sheridan Crane. <laughs> 